Welcome, I am Terry Tropin, and today I'm discussing the new CPT codes and guidelines for 2022. These will be effective January 1, 2022. But first, let me tell you a little about myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus, and I have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I'm also an AHIMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I taught health information technology at Montgomery College for over 20 years. I've also written books on coding. These books are study guides that summarize the coding guidelines and translate them into language that's a little bit easier to understand. So here are the books. I have an e &M, Coding Made Easy, ICD-10 CM Coding Made Easy, and ICD-10 PCS Coding Made Easy. These books are available on Amazon and updated every year. Actually, the CM and the PCS books is already a 2022 um, version available. So here's an overview of what I will be discussing. Introduction to musculoskeletal system, a lot of changes. Spinal arthrodesis, a lot of changes. Spinal deformity, some changes. And the application of cast and strapping. Now, the reason that I'm doing 2022 update only dealing with the muscular skeletal system is there are so many changes that I'm going to do separate videos on some of the other areas. My cardiovascular also has a lot, so I'm going to do a separate one for that. So let's look at the introduction to the musculoskeletal system. Now throughout my slides, deleted words are crossed out and new wording is underlined. So a lot of this is um, the same or just rewording of the same thing, but there are some changes. So we have splint was added, cast splinter traction device. When performed, supplies reported separately, and then this subsequent replacement that was already in there may not have been um, now reworded a little differently. But this is new. If a cast is removed by someone other than the physician or other qualified healthcare professional who applied the cast, report a cast removal code. So if a physician one physician or provider puts the cast on, somebody else takes it off. There are specific codes for that. Now within the introduction, uh, some paragraphs in this introduction were moved, some were clarified, some were placed in different paragraphs, but uh, most of it is uh, clarification, but not all. There are some important differences. So um, the first paragraph in the introduction is a clarification. The guidelines already stated that initial placement of the cast is included. So it says subsequent placement of the cast, splint or strapping, this was added. This part was added. And our traction device may require additional listing. They took that out but they add it may be reported separately. So it's saying actually the same thing. Now this is new. A cast splint or strapping is not considered part of the preoperative care. Therefore, the use of modifier 56 for preoperative management only is not applicable. So putting on a strap or a cast or a splint before surgery, before other treatment is done is not considered preoperative so you're not going to use the 56 management, 56 modifier for preoperative management. So another change is in the introduction is a new heading was added for fracture and or dislocation treatment. This says fracture and um, dislocation treatment codes appear throughout the muscular skeletal system section. So in the subsection for uh, radial fracture, there'll be fracture, and, and for radius, there'll be fracture codes. And for vertebra, there'll be fracture codes. For, so for each section, 
um, a section of the body of the uh, musculoskeletal system, there will include fraction codes. So this is kind of, uh, this is not, this is a clarification, so it's not a, a big change. Also, this is important because this can be confusing. There's no coding correlation between the type of fracture dislocation, such as open, compound, closed, and the type of treatment. So we take the type of fracture and the type of treatment, and there's no correlation between the two. If something is open fracture, it doesn't mean it's going to get open treatment. So treatment of the fracture may be described as closed, percutaneous, or open. In open treatment, the area is open, exposed to the environment. But the important part here is we cannot assume that an open fracture will be treated using an open approach. A closed fracture may require open treatment. So don't confuse the type of fracture and the type of treatment. This was already in the guidelines, but this kind of makes it clearer. But the definition of open treatment has been clarified somewhat. There's a new heading for, um, in the introduction, we're still in the introduction, new heading, fracture inner dislocation treatment. So open treatment is defined as site is open, open surgically, fracture dislocation. So this just said fracture, now they're saying fracture dislocation to the external environment for treatment or the fracture dislocation uh, through the treatment is through it, the traumatic wound or an extension thereof, uh, intermedullary nail, and they added other fixation devices because the intermedullary nail is not the only way that this could be treated. And it talks about a remote treatment and then just open treatment. And we'll talk about, on uh, the next slide shows the difference between the two. So in the picture on the right, this is a um, radial, radius fracture. And so the part that is um, opened and exposed is right where the fracture is. So that's an open treatment. Open treatment can also be when it's opened and then something is inserted. As you can see on the left, a rod is inserted. So this is at the top of the leg or the, the um, hip. A rod is inserted and the fracture site, the uh, femur is here, but that's not where the open part is. The open part is up here and then it's inserted down. So it's not visualizing the area um, directly, but it is oh, some area of the area up here is opened to view. So that's the difference between open fracture and remote fracture. So more in the introduction. I told you it was a lot here. Clarification of what closed treatment is. So the treatment site is not surgically opened, and that of course is the same as it was. Uh, closed treatment of a fractured dislocation may be performed without manipulation, with manipulation. And then they deleted the part that says with or without. The important change in this is that they give examples. Without manipulation, application of a cast splint or strapping, with manipulation, with skeletal traction and or skin traction. Now you see here in this picture that the provider has his or her hands on the outside of the skin and is manipulating the bone um, back into place, but no incision is made. So therefore this is closed. Now there's another thing, this is a change, this last sentence. Casting, splinting, or strapping used solely to temporarily stabilize the fracture for, a, for patient comfort is not considered closed treatment. So that's not a um, definitive treatment, that's just to make the patient more comfortable and that's not considered closed treatment. Okay, so also more definitions. Definition of traction was added. The 2021 version included a definition of skeletal and skin, tract, skin traction. The 2022 version expands on these definitions. 
Traction is the application of a distracting or traction force to the spine or a limb. Skeletal traction is wire pin, screw, or clamp attached to penetrating the bone. And so it's a little bit more information. It gives specific instruments that can be used, wire, pin, screw, clamp. Okay. Skin traction is the application of force to a limb using strapping for a device that is applied directly to the skin only. It's interesting that they deleted felt. So no felt. It just kind of made more general strapping device, which I suppose could be felt or could be something else. The definition of manipulation was also revised. In the first sentence, you see that forces are traction. Manually applied to forces are traction to achieve satisfactory, satisfactory alignment of the fracture or dislocation. And then this was added. If satisfactory alignment reduction is not maintained and requires subsubduction, re-reduction of a fracture or dislocation, same position, same qualified healthcare professional, use the modifier 76, which is repeat procedure or service by the same position or other qualified healthcare professional. So this part here is new. Okay, also we're still just, just getting started in the introduction section. Percutaneous skeletal fixation was also clarified. So the examples were added pins, added screws, pins and screws, placed across the fracture site, typically using, used, before it was x-ray guide imaging, and now it's imaging guidance. So it could be x-rays, it could be something else. So it's made a little bit more inclusive. The definition of external fixation was clarified, and there are specific examples. External fixation, the use of pins and our wires that penetrate the bones and interconnection devices, e.g. clamps, bars, rings. So that's the clamps, bars, rings part is new here. For fracture dislocation treatment, external fixation may be used for temporary or long-term fracture dislocation treatment. So it's kind of added some more examples in here. Now, external fixation can be uniplanar or multiplanar. The uniplanar um, external fixation, these, were, these are now defined specifically in um, the introduction. We're still in the introduction. Um, now, think back when you were taking medical terminology about the different planes coronal, transverse, et cetera. So in the top picture, you see that all the pins are at approximately the same plane. It's like sagittal. Multiplanar is, um, uses wires and pins in several different planes that are held together with stabilizing or tension rings or half rings. External fixation may be used for all types of fractures, dislocation treatment, closed, percutaneous, open. So it's not restricted to just one type of treatment, okay? Codes for external fixation are reported separately only when external fixation is not listed in the code description as inherent to the procedure. So some procedure codes will say with external fixation and some will not, so it depends. But this, these pictures give you an idea of what this is. So in the introduction, the separate heading was added for fracture and our dislocation treatment codes. Uh, the provider can only report the services that he or she personally provided. Okay, that we, we know that. But it also says, it goes further than that, if the person providing the initial treatment will not be providing subsequent treatment, use the modifier 54. So they're doing the surgical part, but aren't going to be doing the follow-up part, the removal of the cast, for example. Um, if treatment of a fracture is defined above, is not performed, report an evaluation and management code. 
So another new heading um, for excision resection of soft tissue tumors. This is good because this kind of differentiates between fractures and dislocations and tumor codes. Now this is a new heading. The definitions for the various kinds of tumors have not changed. They're the same. So that takes care of the changes in the introductory section to the musculoskeletal system. Now let's talk about some of the code changes and the guidelines for individual sections. So for the section head fracture and our dislocation codes, uh, 21315, 21497 is in that range. 21310, closed treatment of nasal bone fracture without manipulation has been deleted. There is a note in there now for closed treatment of nasal bone fracture without manipulation or stabilization using E&M code. So then you're not going to report this code for uh, the stabilization at all anymore. 21315, closed treatment of nasal bone fracture with manipulation without stabilization. And then 21320 for with stabilization. So this one is without stabilization. So these were um, revised. So this is, but this is with manipulation. If it's without manipulation, again, you're going to use an e &M code. Many changes were made to the codes and guidelines for spinal arthrodesis using a posterior post posterior lateral or lateral transverse process technique. This technique may use an approach from the patient's back, side, side towards the back, or transverse. Again, think again about your medical terminology um, classes. So these codes are used for arthrodesis or spinal fusion, which is the surgeon fuses two vertebrae in the spine by placing a bone graft as a bridge that's eliminated the facet joint that connects them. So here you see the um, bridge here. So this is done when um, there's a problem and it's too painful to move the spine at, you know, uh, pitch nerve or something like that. And so they uh, fuse the, the uh, area, which makes uh, mobility a little harder, but it's necessary because of the pain involved. So the introduction to these codes for arthrodesis include new definitions of terms. And this is codes 22590, 22634. So the section starts with new definitions of terms for arthrodesis, corpectomy, facetectomy, foraminotomy, hemilaminectomy, laminectomy, and laminotomy. So lots of definitions. Okay, the introduction to this section defines a vertebral segment. Vertebral segment describes the basic constituent part in which the spine may be divided. It represents a single complete vertebral bone with its associated articular processes and lamina. So this and this is bone. Now this definition hasn't changed, but it's important to look at this because it's um, some of the wording in the codes has changed to reflect this definition more precisely. Now in the professional edition of CPT, there are pictures to better understand all the definition of these terms that we're going to cover. So um, a vertebral inner space is the non-bony compartment between two adjacent vertebral bodies which contain the intervertebral disc and includes the nucleus pulposus, annulus, fibrosus, and two cartil cartilaginous end plates. So that's this. Important thing to remember, it's not bone. Now this, as I said before, this hasn't changed. This was in the 2021 version also, but 
they're using a much more specific terminology for inner space instead of level or segment or whatever before. So they're getting much more specific in their definitions used in codes. The vertebral segment is the bony area that makes up the vertebra. A vertebral inner space is not bone, but the areas between the vertebrae, the bony vertebrae, where the um, intervertebral disc is located. So some definitions have changed or been added. So let's look at corpectomy. Corpectomy identifies removal of a vertebral body during spinal surgery. And here you see right here the uh, picture of the removal right there. So if you look at the pictures that are in this section, it talks about how much of the vertebral body is removed to be your corpectomy. If it's the cervical vertebrae, it's 50% or more. Thoracic is 33% or more. Lumbar, it's 33% or more. So the confusing thing about the arthrodesis codes is these are in the uh, musculoskeletal system. But the term corpectomy is actually not used in orthodesis codes in musculoskeletal. They are, however, used in the nervous system codes, 6101, 6103, vertebral corpectomy, vertebral body resection, partial or complete. So that's one of the things that are really confusing. So the nervous system codes can be used with arthrodesis codes when appropriate. So just be aware that you may end up doing a nervous system code and a um, arthrodesis code from the musculoskeletal system for the same thing the same procedure. The next definition is facetectomy. Fas facetectomy. Again, so facetectomy is the excision of the facet joint between two vertebral bodies. These are two facet joints at each their at each vertebral segment. So you see here this picture pretty much shows it. Here you go. Right here. So it's these little spiky things outside. So again, none of the codes in the musculoskeletal system for arthrodesis include this term. It is used in the nervous system chapter, spine, or spinal cord section. So 63020-63040, laminotomy, uh, hemilaminotomy with decompression of nerve roots, including partial facetectomy, foraminotomy. And then 63045 to uh, 63053 also includes this term along with others. So they're being very precise about the terminology, but then they're throwing a bunch of them into the same codes. And also not even in the um, musculoskeletal system. Okay, so the next definition is uh, form anatomy. This is the excision of bone to widen the intervertebral foramen. And this space is the foramen. And you can see in the uh, picture, this is the foramen, the space. Um, the intervertebral foramen is bordered by the superior notch of the adjacent vertebrae and the inferior notch of the vertebrae the facet joint and the intervertebral disc. So it's between the vertebrae. Now again, these are not found in the um, arthrodesis codes in the musculoskeletal system. It is in the nervous system. You can see I've highlighted it 63020, 63044, use the term 63045, 63048, use the term 63052, 63053, use the term, along with some other ones. Okay, here's another definition. Lamina pertains to the vertebral arch, the flattened posterior portion of the vertebral arch extending between the pedicles and the midline, forming the dorsal wall of the vertebral foramen, and from the midline junction of which the spinous process extends. So, here we go, lamina. 
lamina between the um, uh, spinous process. Okay, the next definition is hemilaminectomy. Hemilaminectomy, removal of a portion of a vertebral lamina, usually form, performed for exploration of access to or decompression of the intraspinal contents. Okay, and here you see in the picture, the lamina. Here's lamina again. Like that's a better picture actually. View. So this is used in some of the codes in uh, musculoskeletal system, but it doesn't use hemilaminectomy. It does laminectomy. So these here talk about laminectomy, but hemilaminectomy is in 63020-63044, um, nervous system. And also in the nervous system are codes that use laminectomy. So hemilaminectomy and laminectomy um, are in both of, in some of these codes uh, and not others. 63045, 63046 uses laminectomy. 63052 uses laminectomy. So the only time you're going to see hemilaminectomy is in 6302063044. Okay, laminotomy. We talked about laminectomy. This is a laminotomy. Laminotomy is the excision of a portion of the vertebral lamina resulting in enlargement of the intervertebral foramen for the purpose of releasing, relieving pressure on a spinal nerve root. So it's... Um, Laminotomy is here, and it's part of the, uh, we're trying to enlarge the uh, forum and the opening, okay? And this is used in the nervous system, 63020-63044, hemilaminectomy with compression of nerve roots. So there's a lot of definitions, some of which sound very much the same. So let's talk about some of these differences. Corpectomy is the vertebral body. That's this one. Facetectomy is this one. Foraminotomy is this one. So corpectomy, facetectomy, foraminotomy. So Foraminotomy is to widen the, um, the space. Okay, hemilaminectomy, laminectomy, and laminotomy. Those are also really similar. Um, so let's talk about what is the difference between those. Hemilaminectomy, removal of a portion of a vertebral lamina. Laminectomy, excision of a vertebral lamina. Laminotomy, excision of a portion of the vertebral lamina. So they all sound pretty much the same, but they, the codes in, uh, talk about why they're done. A hemilaminectomy is for exploration of access to or decompression of the intraspinal contents. A laminectomy is excision of a vertebral lamina. And that's this one here. A laminotomy is excision of a portion of the lamina to enlarge the foramen. So it's to make, this can get narrowed by overgrowth of bone and needs to be um, enlarged. And a laminotomy is that, but it's all dealing with the uh, lamina. Okay, laminotomy versus foraminotomy. Both procedures enlarge this opening, the foramen, again, this. So a foraminotomy, excision of the bone to reopen the foramen when narrowed by overgrowth of bone. So when, this, when the opening has been narrowed because of uh, bone growth. 
Laminotomy is excision of the lamina, this, to open. So this one is overgrowth, and this one is not. So that's kind of pretty fine line there, but those are the difference between the two. So let's go back to the introduction of, to the arthrodesis section with new guidelines. Decompression can be, uh, and fusion may be performed during the same session on the same vertebral segments and our inner spaces. So decompression with fusion that includes laminectomy, facetectomy, and or foramenotomy, report decompression, and then it gives you codes from the nervous system section. And then it says, these are the codes from the nervous section section nervous system section. Decompression solely to prepare the inner space for fusion, they'll report the decompression separately. The implication here seems to be that the decompression reported at the same time, the same session, on the same segments is not reported separately if it's to, um, uh, or is reported separately if it's done at the same time, but if they do decompression, to do it later, to do it another time, maybe even later in the same day, is not reported separately. So decompression to prepare for the fusion, okay? If decompression with fusion is done, then you report it separately. So the introduction to the nervous system, spine and spinal column section, has notes added. And this repeats the notes about decompression that we just talked about. For decompression in the same inner space and vertebral segments is posterior and bifrosion. Um, C 63052, 63053. Don't report 63040, 63043, 6044 with the uh, codes in the um, uh, arthrodesis section of musculoskeletal if it's to prepare the inner space for the fusion. And then again, decompression performed in the same vertebral segments or inner spaces uh, can be separately reported. So it depends on whether it's all done at the same time and the intent. Okay, some codes and notes were revised to use the more specific term inner space rather than level or segment. Remember, inner space is the non bony compartment area between two vertebrae. It's where the disc is, okay? So, for example, 22600, arthrodesis posterior posterior lateral technique, single, they crossed out level as had inner space, so it's more specific, okay? And 22614, each additional, they crossed out vertebral segment and said inner space. 22633, um, they crossed out and segment, so the only left with inner space. So they're making it more specific to inner space. Okay, so that is all, all of the um, arthrodesis changes. That's a lot. That's the certainly the main focus of uh, the changes for this time. But there's also changes in the sections for spinal deformity, which are 22800-22819. So the introduction of the section starts out saying the same. But then it has uh, this additional paragraph. When two surgeons work together as primary surgeons performing distinct parts of an arthrodesis for spinal deformity, each surgeon should report his or her distinct operative work by appending modifier 62 to the procedure code. In this instance, modifier 62 may be appended to procedure codes 22800, 22819, as long as both surgeons continue to work together. So each surgeon is doing something different, but they're kind of, um, but all of what's being done is reported by one code. So therefore, they both report the same code with the modifier 62. 
Another thing in the uh, paragraph added to the spinal deformity section is spinal deformity arthrodesis codes and kyphectomy codes should not be reported in conjunction with vertebral body tethering 0656T, 0657T. These are category three codes. What are they? Well, what these codes are, these are category three codes, which is emerging technology, which is new procedures. So these are called vertebral body tethering. And what happens is, it's really actually kind of interesting, it's a non-fusion way to treat scoliosis. It uses anchors and screws made of titanium alloys to straighten the spine as the child grows. So they have this uh, tethering that they put on here. And as the child continues to grow, the spine starts to straighten. Fascinating, interesting stuff. Okay, so we have done a talked about a lot, and this was only the muscular skeletal changes. It's impossible to remember all of this. So here's some suggestions of things to write in your book to help. So in the introduction of muscular skeletal system, make a note to refer you to um, the codes in the nervous system section. And then make a note in the nervous system section that refers you to the musculoskeletal codes. I know that there are notes in there that kind of do that, but if you just write something in there, you'll see right away and it will remind me. And also, if you look at the codes uh, next to all the definitions in there, you will see, as we talked about, some codes include the um, definition. So for laminectomy, you have 33630, 33634. For laminotomy, hemi -la hemi laminectomy, partial fascectomy, for mononomy, you have these codes. And then these codes and then these codes, and then these codes. So if you put those next to the definition, it will give you a head start in figuring out what codes to use. Now there's other codes that use laminectomy, removal of facets, there may be others in the um, musculoskeletal system, but we're talking about the um, arthrodesis codes at this point. So also, it's interesting, in the index to CPT, it includes some of these terms, but not others. So what you can do is write them in the index and list the appropriate codes. Laminotomy, facetectomy, foraminotomy. So those are not in the index, but you can write them in and write in the codes, and you do it once, and then next time you go back to that, there they are. You might also circle the note of castings about casts using during initial subsequent encounters. You might also circle the note saying decompression solely to prepare the inner space for fusion is not reported separately. Okay, that completes this video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. I hope to have videos on CPT changes to the cardiovascular and other sections soon. If you enjoyed this video, and I sure hope you did, please give it a like and subscribe at the pic by clicking on the picture in the lower right-hand corner of this slide. So here again are the books I have written on coding. These are available on Amazon. The easy, you can click on the link that's in the introduction to this, or you can go into Amazon and type in my last name, T-R-O-P-I-N. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video.